Hey everyone, it's Tira with Rent Mason Bees. How is everyone doing? I hope you're all having a great summer. Um, it's the middle of July and I'm here on Bainbridge Island in Washington State. And if you have been following along, we've been doing a part one where we take a sneak peek inside your Mason Bee nesting block. And part two was a couple of weeks later. And today, part three, we're going to see what our baby Mason Bees are doing right now. Um, my leaf cutter bees are out and they are just starting to emerge. So I have had a lot of emails and calls about leaf cutter bees depending on when you received them and where you live. Um, usually here in the Washington State Seattle area they usually come out towards the end of July and I, I noticed that mine are just starting to come out. So if you are still wondering what's going on with your leaf cutters hang tight until the end of July and uh, feel free to email us at info at rentmasonbees.com and if you missed part one and part two of our little mason bee nesting block adventure um, please go to our blog I put everything on our blog we have tips for safe gardening tips and videos and everything we, we want you guys to learn about mason bees and leaf cutter bees we put on our blog and our Facebook page but I know some people don't do Facebook so anyways let's take a look inside our mason bee nesting block it's the middle of July and um, yeah, so let's go, let's go see. All right, let's take a look inside our Mason Bee nesting block for part three of our discovery of how our little baby bees develop into full grown bees. So let's take a look. Last time I, there were some cocoons and a couple of larvae. Ah, there we go. That's how quick they work, you guys. It's amazing. So these, they have all formed cocoons now. So as you can see, they've all formed cocoons. It looks like that one might be, uh, it, he's dead or it's dead. Um, who knows what got to it? It could have been uh, the pollen mites. Looks like it may have eaten its loaf of pollen. So all these little yellow bits here that you see, all of these are pollen mites. Um, and like I said in the last video, this is why it is super, super important to clean your mason bee nesting blocks every fall. It is really important. Um, people that drill holes in wood is probably one of the worst things you can do for mason bees because you can't open up that block of wood and clean. Um, so you can use trays, you can use the straws that can open up, um, but definitely clean them because what's gonna happen is these pollen mites eat all the pollen loaf for the developing larvae. And then they eat all their food and then they die. So it looks like this may have been a result of that. That little bee died because the pollen mites ate its food supply and it didn't have enough strength to then go make a cocoon. Let's see what's going on in the other side. Since these guys are all, oh geez, look at that. Oops, That's those are all pollen mites, guys. So again, I know, um, when you harvest your bees in the fall, because I know a lot of you um, that raise your own mason bees do this, it is so important. This is why you're harvesting your mason bees. This is how you save the solitary bee population for mason bees by helping them get rid of these pollen mites. So you can see another dead bee right there. Pollen mite ate its loaf of pollen, its food source, and then it was not able to form uh, a cocoon. Um, and so again, um, when you rent from us, this is what we do for you. We harvest and clean millions of bees and take a look at our blog post. We've got videos and our YouTube channel. We have videos on our cleaning process, but when you rent from us, you don't have to worry about it. We will have you ship these blocks back to us in September once these baby bees. So, you know, we just saw these a month ago and they were, their larvae spun into these silken cocoons. So what they're doing right now is they're developing into a full grown bee. So we need to give them another month or so until you ship these back to us. So they're nice and safe. These cocoons are pretty durable. They're waterproof. They are an encasing shell that keeps them nice and safe. But I'm curious to see what's going on with the other ones down here. Ah, oh, geez. Pollen mites again. So please, please, if you are raising your own mason bees, um, make sure you harvest and clean them every year. If you're renting from us, thank you. Um, we're going to help you with our solitary bee population. 
uh, to make sure that our mason bees are clean and they go back out into the environment. We send them back to gardeners and we send them to farmers so that everyone gets nice, clean, healthy, strong bees. Um, I will post the link down below for the video on uh, how we clean. Um, but yeah, look at that. Those are all pollen mites. Nasty little suckers. Anyways, um, there's another dead bee from the pollen mites eating its food. So there we go, guys. That's what's happening. Part three of what's happening inside your mason bee nesting block. Wow, there you go. All the larvae have formed cocoons and now they will grow into full grown bees in those cocoons. And in the fall, we will ask you to mail your nesting block back to us. We'll notify you and let you know. So don't do it until you see the emails and all the, all the information that we send you. Um, one of the things I forgot to mention about pollen mites. Yes, they, they're bad in a lot of different ways. Um, you can see how they eat the pollen loaf then the larvae starve. So that's one way. The second way is when they stay and they hang out in that nesting block um, until the adults emerge next spring. And when they emerge, they cling and they stick to the back of the mason bees. And we've seen pictures from some of our, some of our hosts and some people that raise mason bees that pollen mites just get they can kill those bees once they're flying around. And they're, I'll post pictures. It's not a pleasant sight, but this is why we need to harvest and clean and take care of our mason bees and take care of their population. So, um, and then if they are stuck to the back, the mason bees, they go and they land on a flower, they deposit some more of those little pollen mites and then another bumblebee or uh, uh, any other type of pollinators will then get the pollen mites that were dropped. So it's helpful if we harvest and clean them every year. We'll do that for you if you're hosting. If you're watching this video and you raise your own mason bees, please make sure you harvest and clean them every year. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, info at rentmasonbees.com. And uh, feel free to check out our blog again. We have a lot of information on there. And then our Facebook page, YouTube page, community page. There's lots of things that we're doing for a community outreach for teaching everyone about mason bees. So I hope you all are having a great summer. Um, this will be our last series of what's happening because they're done. They're in their cocoons forming. I won't have anything exciting to show you next time, um, but I will be doing more videos um, as things move along and harvesting and all of that. So stay tuned to our YouTube channel and our Facebook and our blog. Thank you. Have a great summer. Bye.